Hey, this is Mike. Before I get started, please subscribe to my channel. I'm dedicated to pumping out tons of information on cars of all makes and models, all daily information. So if you could go ahead and subscribe to the channel right now, I'd really appreciate it. So right now, I am at East Coast Honda in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and they are allowing me to show you this awesome 2015 Honda Civic EXL. So the Honda Civic EXL is one of those type of cars that's extremely popular and we will see in this video why. Uh, did you know that this one has a blind spot camera? Did you know that this car has uh, lines on the backup camera and do you know what those lines are for? So those are just some of the things we're going to check out today. So. Um, Please, and this is going to be a little bit of a long video than you know a lot of people are used to. So if you if you need to skip around, that's that's fine with me. Also, at any time you have a question, just go ahead and pause the video and leave a comment in the comment section, and I will be glad to do my best to answer the question. Also, there's a lot of people, a lot of experts out there that would uh, be glad to help you out as well. So the 2015 Honda Civic EXL. This one has the daytime running lights here in the front, and hopefully I'll be able to do a video at nighttime so you can actually see what all the lights, interior and exterior lights look like. But we do have the halogen reflector headlights here in the front, and you see the, uh, the daytime running lights on there. And then you have the fog lights there at the bottom. And this car is all about efficiency and longevity and convenience and comfort as well. So, but check out the, the wheels. Uh, you have the 17 inch alloy wheels with the black paint and then you have the aluminum popping through the paint to give it a sporty look. And it's sitting on Michelin tires. It has four wheel disc brakes. So with the weight of this car and the stopping power, uh, it's a very, the, the, that's a big plus for me uh, is really good stopping power because it is a really good safety feature as you probably know if you've dri driven a car for any amount of time all right so right here is the little camera lens on the side mirror which I'll show you when we get on the inside uh, what it actually looks like and what angle you'll see so one of the things I want to mention is that this car has a uh, proximity key so there's the key there you don't actually have a a physical key to um, that you have to take out of your pocket this is designed actually to just stay in your pocket the whole time so I can use the lock and unlock button to open this car I can also use it to open up the trunk um, but it is running right now so I won't be able to demonstrate locking the doors but to lock the doors you push this button here right now it's just gonna beep at me but typically I just walk up to the car with my hand with my um, key in the pocket or my purse or whatever if I, you know, if I carry a purse. So anyways, um, I just put my hand back here and it senses my hand and it also senses the key and it unlocks the car automatically. So I don't actually have to uh, take the key out, fumble it with the keys and unlock the door and then get in and uh, start it up. Uh, it's designed to unlock for me just by touching the handle. Alrighty, so here's the inside of the passenger door and it is mostly black, but it does have this metallic accent here and then you've got the little pocket there for the on the door plus a bottle holder down here as well and those are really good features to have because um, you always when you get in a vehicle there's oh you always have something in your hand so you want to have places to put it and stuff manual adjustments on this leather seats black leather seats with the white contrast stitching there And then you can see it has like this pillow effect. It's very, very comfortable seats. Um, it is a hot day, so sorry about me sweating. <laughs> so anyways, here is, um, you can see the leg room. Now, from the outside, you look at this car and it is extremely, looks small. It looks like a little itty bitty car that, you know, like you're gonna be cramped in it. But actually getting in this car, you don't feel cramped at all. You have plenty of headroom. You have plenty of leg room and um and also the design of the dash is is such towards a little bit 
dished out to where it doesn't make you feel claustrophobic at all. And uh, of course there's a place here on the door for your arm to rest. So it's a very comfortable car and you do have the bolstered seats as well. Now let's check out the back. Now you can see, um, so here's the inside of the, the door here. It does have the pockets and stuff in it. But as you can see, the, I folded the seat down so you can see that the seats actually fold down in a 60-40 split fashion. So if you, you can have a combination of passenger and cargo space if you need it. In addition to the, the roomy trunk it already has. Um, so here's the, the seats here. And you can see that front seat is all the way back and it has still has significant leg room. So me being about six feet tall, uh, I can sit there and my knees will not touch the, um, the seat. You got the, the headrest there, plus this folds down, and then you have the armrest and some cup holders there. All right, so I can just take a look here in the back. I can use the key, of course, to open up the trunk. There's a couple different ways to open it up. The key is one. There's also a button under here. Um, I can push that. You see what the button looks like. There's the backup camera there, which we'll check out when we get on the inside. So here's the trunk. Pretty good sized trunk. I mean, it's not a uh, it's not a small trunk by no means. And this one has already installed uh, this plastic. Uh, mat here that just is perfect. Everybody needs one of these for their trunk. It can you can go ahead and throw uh, beach towels or anything in there. Um, you can put a plants or in there, whatever you want, and it catches all the dirt or sand or anything. And it's real easy to just lift out. It's not very heavy. You just lift right out, dump it, clean it, hose it out, put it right back in. Really easy way to keep your trunk clean, and um, you know protects the inside of the vehicle. All right, so under here is your spare tire. And this one actually does have a spare tire, which a lot, a lot of new vehicles are being offered without them. So you wanna make sure that you know if you have a spare tire or not. All right, let's get another profile shot here. So let's take a look into the fuel door, which is on the driver's side, which I prefer. All right, so here's the fuel door opens up. It is a locking fuel door, so nobody can mess with your cap or whatever. And uh, this unscrews and it hangs right here on this little place. And that way it doesn't hang down and scratch your paint, which I like. Here's the window sticker, which I'll put some links to uh, their website, East Coast website, so you can check out all the details. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. Check out the 1.8 liter VTEC. And that's just not a name, that is a really special engine. Alright, the latch is just to the left of the Honda symbol. You just reach in and push it kind of up to the right. And yes, they didn't cover it up with plastic. All right, so the 1.8 liter has 143 horsepower and it sips gas and is surprisingly uh, zippy because you don't have a huge body, you know, heavy car. So you're able to, you know, zip around in traffic and, and, um, and feel comfortable out on the highway. Uh, but anyways, 143 horsepower is a you know, pretty decent amount of horsepower, especially for a car this size. So let's take a look on the inside. So to start this car, all you have to do is put your foot on the brake. As long as you have the key in your pocket in the car somewhere, you just put your foot on the brake there and push this shiny red candy-like button. And it starts right up. All right, here we are. And this vehicle has plenty of leg room, knee room, and everything is kind of well placed. Very kind of simple, but easy to use. Uh, things are kind of separated. I don't know if you notice the dash there 
has different levels there that's separated so it's not all clustered in one spot which to me indicates like an easier simpler way of finding things okay so let's go ahead and start here on the driver's door and we have your power windows and the driver's door itself is actually an automatic door so you just push the button and it goes down up and down automatically and you have uh, the ability to turn off all the windows if you want to and you can lock and unlock your doors here your side mirror adjustments are here you just have to pick a side and then once you're finished uh, adjusting your mirrors then you just put it in the center and then then this won't do anything and it won't mess up your um, side mirrors that you just adjusted all right so over here we have a trash control button uh, default is always on when you start the vehicle it's on but you can always turn that off if you need to usually uh, the only time you'd want to do that is when you get, you get your stuck or so, for some reason you want to spin tires and uh, there's the economy mode button there that big green button and when you push that it will tell the car that you want the highest fuel economy possible and um, it, it, it adjusts itself mechanically uh, to do that uh, the shift points are different and the um, and the even the the fan on the air conditioner might dim out a little bit just to give you the more optimal fuel economy now it also has a, a um, like a little coach type system uh, you see those blue bars to the right and left of the speedometer they will change colors and uh, depending on right now they're blue because I'm not driving but if I'm driving and I'm just kind of flooring it or, or you know driving too aggressively and using too much gas uh, then they will you know change to a red or, or different colors to kind of coach you as you're driving so it's not just um you know there's it's two levels of that one is to coach you uh the other one is to uh, the car will do its part you just have to do your part so you know if you put it in eco mode and just floor it it's still not going to save gas just because you do your driving habits Alrighty, here on the side mirror just want to point out that it has a portion there on the end of the mirror it's a little bit distorted. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, that is that is to help bend the light, and so you can see in your blind spot. So that's why it looks a little bit distorted. It is a very good safety feature. Now you notice, um, you know, you go oh, you see the older uh, little round things that people put on their um, their rearview mirrors to try to blind, eliminate that blind spot. It's similar to that, except for it's just not so obvious uh, having that thing on your on your window. So. And also it has that line showing you that beyond that line, uh, it's going to be a little bit distorted. Which is a good thing. Alright, so let's take a look here at the steering wheel. It, it is a leather wrapped steering wheel. It's very comfortable. It has the bolsters here to get you a better grip. And it's classy looking, especially with this metallic part here. So you'll notice it has a bunch of buttons on it on the right side. You, uh, you have your cruise control. You just have to make sure it's turned on by pushing that button. And you have an indicator light up here. And uh, so once you're, once it's turned on, you can always set it using that button. And you can adjust your speed. And you can cancel it right there. Basic, you know, the real basic features that, uh, the controls that, that's been on cruise control for so long. So here are these buttons. You have the volume for your radio here. You can change to the, your station and you can change your source uh, of your audio, say um, AM, FM, satellite radio, whatever, that kind of stuff, uh, your source there. And then you have this button, this little tiny screen up here to the right, uh, it changes through different information. So your fuel economy, a blank page, or the, uh, the clock there. So let me zoom in and kind of cycle through again so you can see what, what I did. Uh, has your odometer, your outside temperature, 99 degrees, very hot today, like I said. Uh, so today's date, has a time, all that, that's very handy stuff. Uh, if you're busy and you need to focus on, you know, on a schedule, this is all good stuff to have. So I'm going to push the button to cycle through. This is what your radio is doing. Uh, this is your, your fuel economy, your average, and your range. And then a blank screen. And then back to that. You can also push uh, this menu button here below which will go into some different things uh, your settings this is a different menu here so you can you know reset your trip 
Uh, you can get different vehicle information and then you can customize uh, a whole bunch of stuff in there. So that's what the menu does. All right, so down here, these buttons are for your Bluetooth phone. Once you pair your Bluetooth with the system, you can answer calls here. And like say, if somebody's calling you, uh, it doesn't matter if your radio's on because it will dim out the radio. Also, if your fan is blowing real loudly, it'll dim that out as well. So once your phone rings, you just push that button. To hang up, you can just push, push, push the second button here, this middle button. And to actually make a call, you can push this button. Now this is your voice recognition button. You can make calls with it, but you can also change uh, stations on the radio and, and do other things like that. So um, it's, it's, it's a multi-function button there, but it's all about the voice recognition. And there's a whole bunch of di different commands that you can say um, once you push that button and you know it'll be in your manual uh, and also something you get used to. And it's a very good safety feature. I highly recommend learning the commands. Uh, at the very least, learning how to um, send calls with it because it's a way of you staying productive, making your calls, and keeping your hands on the wheel and eyes on the road. So that's a really good safety feature. Um, you know, this the vehicle has a lot of safety features like that. Alrighty, so let's take a look here. Uh, this is your turn signal, and also your um, your headlights. They do have the automatic feature there. And then your fog lights are turned on and off here. Over on this side is your windshield wipers, stuff like that. And on the end of this um, turn signal, you have this button. And when you push that, it turns on that camera over there I was telling you about. So I'm going to go ahead and push that. And there's your view. It gives you a direct shot of, you can see it shows you where it's aiming of the right side of the vehicle and then you have these guidelines here showing you how far away um, it is so if somebody's in that red line that means they're there in your blind spot and you don't want to change lanes right now um, also I'm going to turn it off now you notice I had my hands on the wheel and I can just push that button very easily now if I turn my turn signal on it turns on as well too so there's a couple those are the two ways that to turn it on all right so let's look at the speedometer here I mean the RPMs has a big RPMs gauge right there front and center and uh, you can see you have your cruise control button there you also have the eco button on and off um, so this is where you'll see you know different information there and you can you know you you can select this right here selects on this screen over here um, so you have your your odometer but pushing this button will go through to your different trips A and B alrighty so now this like I was saying before this is a separate system up here here's where your speedometer is and see if I can zoom in slightly you also have your uh, miles per gallon there to the right it's like a real-time gauge there on the right side and then on the left side you have your fuel gauge and you'll notice it has a little arrow to the left of the little fuel pump showing you which side your fuel door is on. And you know it's pretty cool, pretty cool design here with the uh, speedometer being it's kind of like a heads-up display in a way to where you're just looking out there uh, on the road and your speedometer is like right there, easy to see. Uh, and then you have the less important stuff down here. But if you have a manual transmission, then the RPMs is very important to look at. So that's that's pretty prominent there. All right, so let's look over here. This is your four-way flashers. And here's your touch screen. And so right now I'm in the menu system. There's some uh, soft touch buttons here to the left. And they will illuminate depending on what screen you're in. So right now, let's go ahead and go into phone. And then once I'm in the phone settings... Uh, the phone feature you'll notice this menu pops up also your home screen so I'm going to push the menu button and I guess there's no menu on this particular screen oh yeah I know what it is because I don't have a phone paired so there's nothing really I could do here you notice it's all blacked out uh, call history and, and speed dial is all blacked out because no phone paired so you can go back to the men to the home button here and go into information and this is pretty neat because 
uh, this is your you can have a wallpaper here now East Coast Honda went ahead and put their their little East Coast Honda with their phone number uh, on it and for your service appointments so but you can change that to anything you want so um, you can change like you can adjust your clock you can change your um, wallpaper all that good stuff all right I'm gonna hit the home button and you can always hit the back button this one pops up when you're in that particular screen all right home button let's go into audio this is where you'll find your radio stuff um, it's just AM FM and it'll pop up here when you cycle through AM FM like that all right let's go back to home it does have a CD player as well uh, and also there's lots of different actually ways of playing uh, music through the sound system I'm gonna push source uh, just not cycling through now because uh, we don't have anything hooked up uh, you got the AM FM but you also have your CD player which is up here you have a Bluetooth port where you can play music off of a like a little jump drive or something or a flash drive and your iPod you can play music through that through your um, USB Pandora and AHA uh, internet radio stations off of your phone and then you have a Bluetooth off of your phone or any other Bluetooth device plus you have an HDMI port which I'll show you where it is that actually is pretty neat because you can play actual movies on the screen as long as you're in park so um, you know one person mentioned they're gonna play an Xbox or PlayStation or something on there and I thought that was pretty cool alright so that's the dip, those are the multiple sources there uh, and here's where you got your settings for your clock and audio your phone this is where you can set, kind of set up stuff and then iLink is for uh, your cell phone so once you set, connect your cell phone that's when you have a, uh, you'll have access to the Pandora and AHA apps and stuff like that all right so that's the main kind of the main overview of that screen um, the different things that you can do with it so down here is your climate control you have your temperature and then you have your fan speed your recirculate the air you can of course turn it on and off your front defroster, your rear defroster, and you'll notice it has two things there because uh, once you turn your rear defroster on, it automatically turns your side mirror uh, heaters on. And you know where you want the air to blow there. It does have heated seats here in the front. You can control them right there for the driver and passenger. Here's a little pocket there, and I'll just put my phone in there so you can see how deep it is. Kind of a quick access. Um, put stuff in there but this is even more convenient down here this this quick access part and I'm going to I'm turn the fan down a little bit I'm going to um, put my cell phone in there so you can see there's different uh, I guess you see those little bars in there they kind of stop your phone from going too far you can prop it up a little bit like that also I noticed um, the phone kind of fits right here and I'm using the phone because that's one of the main things people have to find a place for in their car so this is pretty neat right here I thought that was kind of interesting that my phone fit kind of perfect right there and it seemed kind of stable but it is resting against the heated seat button so I might actually accidentally turn it on or something but um, anyway that's a pretty neat little pocket there it's really easy to you know access your stuff once you have it there so this is where you find your HDMI and your USB ports. There's another one in the console, by the way, the USB. There's a 12 volt power supply there. There's your parking brake here. And so here's your shifter. And um, so basically you just take the shifter and go ahead and put it in reverse so you can see the backup camera. And so the backup camera is a little bit distorted, the lens to give you the stretched out view so you can see as much as possible behind the vehicle. So to counteract that distortion, they put these grid lines here. And the grid lines give you an estimated size of your vehicle as you're backing up. And also, if you turn the steering wheel, they will turn to kind of give you an idea of which way you're going. Um, also, it has uh, these um, horizontal lines to show you, kind of help you with your distance. The main one right here is this dotted line you do not want to get any closer to anything uh, than that dotted line and it looks like um, you know they're being a little bit conservative there they are a little bit but um, 
it, this distance between this line and this and the vehicle is only a few inches down here it would be a few feet so because of that distortion it looks like you have more room than when you actually do it wouldn't take more you know that much to to close that gap there so you, they're trying to help you out there with the guidelines all right so let's continue on to neutral and then you have drive and then this is your just normal drive position then you have a sport mode which tells the vehicle that you want to get some more horsepower you want the highest horsepower the vehicle is capable of and you're not really concerned about fuel economy right now and then if you need to um, go to a lower gear uh, it has the low feature there and that's usually for if you're going downhill you need some engine braking that kind of thing so some additional torque that kind of stuff so there's your shifter real easy basic not a not a you know don't need a lot of training to use that cup holders are here and they do have these little flexible things to help take up the slack on different size cups all right so here's your center console and this lifts up and you have a an, an additional USB port in here plus some storage space and also you notice it has a little bit of place right here for the uh, wires to go in and out of this pocket so it doesn't get crushed when you put this down. Also, this can slide up and down like that so you can, you know, get more comfortable on a long trip. All right. Rear view mirror, it does have the little flippy part to it. Um, it's not an auto dim, so at nighttime you can flip it to the night position. Up here we have tap lights on both sides for a quick reading light. You can always turn the interior lights off to where they don't turn on when the door opens up if you want to with that button. And then this is for your sunroof. So your sunroof is here. It does have the shade. It opens and closes. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up. I'm going to show you it does vent like that. I'm going to close it. You can open it up all the way. And on a hot day where you don't want the sun to shine on you, you can just close it right up. You also have these mirrors in the visors on both sides. All right, let's take a look at the visibility back here. All right, there you have it, 2015 Honda EXL. And I hope this, vi this video has been useful to you. And um, if it has, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you can like the video, subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. And if there's anything in it that I just skipped over, didn't get right, any clarifications, please leave that in the comments as well. I'd really like to, uh, to hear your input. And also, it helps other people that are watching this video too. So if you have any experience with a Honda Civic, 2015-14 Honda Civic, you drive one every day, please leave your experience in the comments. I know everybody would like to know, um, you know, your experience because the people that are watching these videos either are very interested in buying one or they're just curious or whatever, but more than likely they're at least considering buying one of these in the future. So if you have experience with one, it really helps out other people. All right. Thank you for watching. And, um, I'll see, thank you to East Coast Honda for allowing me to show off this awesome car. I'll see you next time.